Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day four. Is this day four? Day four, day four of print 17. Woo! Um, my name is Deborah Korn, and I'm the Intergalactic Ambassador to the Printiverse here at Print Media Center, broadcasting live from Chicago. And uh, we're going to start. We, we're going to start off today, as we start off most days, with our mover and shaker interviews. Uh, these are Alliance members, uh, and uh, let me give you a little background. The Alliance members are actually vetted, so to speak. Um, Everybody, I don't mean I don't mean to seem rude, but everybody can't be in the alliance. Uh, the alliance companies are the companies that are moving and shaking and pushing the industry forward and have technologies and solutions that are based in reality of, of what, uh, like Jamie the printer, is, goes through every day. And uh, uh, Jamie the printer from Allegra Princeton is here. Um, and he's been asking the panel real, real printer questions. And we've had a lot of questions from the audience. So... Um, we're going to introduce some of those Alliance members to you today. And starting off with Carl from Mole Brothers. Uh, why don't you tell um, everybody who you are, what you do at Mole, and how Mole is helping um, that your customers make money? Well, my name is Carl Degar. I am a West Coast uh, sales, uh, technical sales manager. And uh, we look in at the customer's uh, request and what they're looking to finish, predominantly post-press, and uh, we're now focusing a little bit more and leaning to, uh, to some of the package folding gluing, uh, where we've already mastered, uh, I could consider mastered uh, the, the commercial uh, presentation material uh, market. Um, as mentioned in the past, uh, I think last uh, meeting or seminar we did, we consider ourselves really there handling almost everything that you see that's ran automatically for presentation material, whether it's be for a pharmaceutical company or anything that you handle where it holds your documents, anything like that, pretty much it's ran on a mall. So um, yesterday you joined a panel about um, the upping your end game with finishing, about bringing finishing in-house. And um, I asked a question that not everybody agreed with. You know, should all printers bring their finishing in-house? But in this case, why should printers bring your finishing equipment in-house? Well, it's not a your thing. It's finishing, to be honest. I mean, if you'd like a correct answer, it's if you'd like to do finishing, you can do it in-house. And I recommend it, as mentioned yesterday. You have to look at those things that you're sending out. If you're signing the check and you're looking at the the bill and the invoice, and you're wondering what you're doing, even if it comes down to adhesive. You could spend fifteen to $20,000 a month in adhesive, and you're wondering why. Even if we come in and we show you how to cut that down in half, it's doable. But back to the question of finishing in-house as a commercial printer, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of room for that in most facilities. Um, if you're sending work out all the time, and you're transporting it, you're packing it twice, you're unpacking it, you're losing that window of quality control. That's big for some guys, especially when you're talking about printers, they're very picky. Uh, I think that that's the, one of the most important things is that it's the first thing the customer sees and it's the last thing you do. So, you know, finish it properly, that's what I say. And if you could do it, do it in-house. Um, folders, gluers, packaging. Um, obviously, that has been very topical in the printiverse and very right. topical in the industry about a, um, I'm not going to say it's a growth market, but it's a predictable market that everyone's saying is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, things need boxes. Yeah. Um, Mo must be, um, you know, putting their all their eggs in that basket. Um, so what kind of... Um, future are you looking for in packaging and how is your equipment helping enable the printers to have that growth? Well, that's a huge question because a lot of printers, they have presses, they see them run, they usually go to the finishing, the bindery, which it used to be called, and cut, stitch, fold, bind, you know, the typical commercial print. Now, the owners are looking at what they have, which is the press, they could print heavier stock. All they need now is to die cut, fold and glue, and they could address the packaging market. So a lot of printers are looking at saying, hey, how do I acquire 
a packaging salesperson. They just capture that. They don't upset any of the other salespeople on the force, which is huge. And now they could bring on a whole new product line with minimal cost. It's, it's, it's a real no-brainer. Now, what we do is we take the best of both worlds and we say, look, we could do your conventional bindery finishing, card tipping, taping, converting, and all this of the presentation material, but with some slight changes on our equipment, we can now accommodate cart and folding gluing with partitions, auto bottom boxes, things that you see every day in the store, four corner boxes. And you know what it needs? It just needs a good quality press, which we already do in this industry, this particular industry. Have you brought any new equipment to the show this year? Uh, we've been, um, and to answer one of the other questions earlier too, mm -hmm. we did bring some uh, new pieces of equipment, some, uh, some simpler uh, taping solutions, which is important for uh, shelf talkers and things like that the packaging companies look for uh, with peel and stick tape. Uh, we do have a, a piece of equipment that's very affordable and uh, very efficient in our booth right now. Uh, we were also taking that uh, portion of it and also integrated into our higher speed line. So if you need to do 80,000 boxes with tape to hang or to return, uh, even like courier envelopes, we can do that. We're converting that right now from start to finish in our booth. Um, and to really look at coming back full circle to saying, hey, it, does it have to be a mall? No, but you should have that in front of you when you're making a decision, whether it's us or the other guy. And I think you'll be pleasantly satisfied with the group um, in general. You'll find that everything is, uh, is, is, is above board. And we don't like to do anything we can't do. We're very technically uh, driven. Uh, so what we uh, look at, we're usually very, very confident of it hitting the floor running. I like that approach. You know, it doesn't have to be me, but put me next to anybody else you're considering Absolutely. and then make a make a decision. That's really cool. So will. where is Mo Brothers located on the show floor for anybody who's here? And uh, for people at home, how, uh, tell them about your website and anything else that's going on over there. Okay, we're at booth 3608. Uh, just, well, 3608. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can always find us at mallbrothers.com. Uh, nice video gallery, a uh, very well laid out website, easy to contact the appropriate person if needed. Um, anyone in the organization is willing and able to help you and to point you to the right person that can uh, visit with you if needed. Um, so don't hesitate, call us, contact us, come by, visit us. We'll see where you're at and what your needs are. Thank you so much, Carl, Carl from Oberlis, everybody. Yay! Thank you. And now Marion. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get um, the media clip table tent? You got a break? No, no, you click on me. Good for you? Thank you. Yes, it was great. Okay. I thought we gave them everything. Yeah, that was a better idea. That's easier. Oh, yeah, she has one. It says info trans. It says keyboard intelligence. No, there's one that actually has, from Girls Who Print Day. It says Pat McGrew on it. Yeah. Do you want the other one? Give me the other one. Please, yes. Okay. It's a, it's a, does, we're live. Okay. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, that's the extent of my... Oh, comment allez-vous? Ah, good. Oui. Très bien, merci. Ah, uh, uh, merci. Merci. <laughs> uh, so that is the extent of my French, everybody, which is why I was so fortunate to meet your lovely husband, Andre, yeah. at Discoup Lyon. And um, after looking at your product, I knew that I had to, you know, I was stalking him all over the place. And he turned out to be the coolest guy on the planet <laughs> and ended up hanging out with him and Dave from Mindfire and going all over Lyon. And it was that, oh, yeah, we hung out with Shawnee too. It was a very convenient having someone who spoke French with us, let me tell you. Deborah so you'll Korn, understand my accent. Yes. <laughs> Deborah Corn in France is an acquired taste. <laughs> I'll just put it to you that way. I only had one cab driver curse me out, but awesome. So, Marion, first of all, am I saying your name correctly? Yes, perfectly. Oh, okay, good. Because I'm pretending I have a French accent, and that's yes. how I'm saying it. <laughs> 
Um, why don't you tell every, first of all, thank you so much for taking a chance on the Printiverse and taking a chance on Print17. I know it was a last minute decision, but that you wanted to be involved with this community. I think it's very important that people recognize that there are smaller companies out there that just want to be part of this community and sh they rented space to be in this alliance. So thank you so much. And I want to make sure that everybody understands fully um, the value that you bring to the table here. So can you please um, introduce yourself, who you are, and um, what it is that um, Media Clip helps, how that helps printers, and how they're making money with your product. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Marion, and I'm the founder and CEO of Media Clip. Uh, at Media Clip, we developed a software to enable product personalization. So basically, when we started, we started in the photo industry. So that's why we're quite new in the printing space. We always uh, worked with printers, but our conversation was most toward uh, retailers. So we've developed a software basically to um, allow customer to personalize photo books, calendar, greeting cards, um, whatever. <laughs> And um, from, I would say, the last three, four years, we uh, are asked to have other type of product. There are huge market growing outside. We think about uh, home decor, by example, or um, customized package for customer packaging as well. So our software handles any type of printed products. So now we are um, enabling the, the printers. There's two ways. The first, the first way is if they want to create their own B2C to B to uh, website, to sell a website to their customer to order uh, any uh, customized printed product. Some of them want to get into the B2C as well, which is a little bit more difficult because the strategy and the segmentation is really hard to get. Right. Uh, but on the other side, we've developed a partner program because we have a lot of retailers always looking for new products. And historically, there was, the, the retailers were struggling because they had to integrate with the printer's API. They didn't know where to go to find a printer who were printing like cool products. So there was a lot of technical issues for them to move forward. So what we tried to do is remove all the complexity for the relationship between the retailer and the printer. Now we have retailers uh, selling product and you know, within a, a day, everything is done. It's an online live and it uh, fully, uh, uh, they're able to, to print it. So this technology complexity is everywhere. Technology is moving fast and we are enabling uh, all, the, uh, all the stakeholders to be online quickly without thinking about technology. And um, it was funny because when I was having dinner with Andre, he took a picture of me. And then he did something on his phone, and then he showed me, and I was a pillow. Yeah. Then he, we started talking again, and I turned around, and he held up his phone, and I was a mug. <laughs> and then he just kept going. I was a curtain. I was a floor. I was a, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it took him all of two, I mean, he was doing it on his cell phone in yeah. between biting, you know, <laughs> eating his dinner. What, yeah. what is, who are the to who are the printers that you want to have conversations with? Is there a sweet spot for you? Well, what are the ones that are ready to take this step so it's not this long process of, who, who are you looking for? Uh, basically, there are a lot of innovative printers and they have a lot of ideas. So we all know that mass customization is a huge market coming. There's not much software. So we're looking for partners that um, are providing good solution for the mass customization. They have uh, nice and good products. Also, we uh, are looking for uh, printers who, ma who uh, have customers who are, in, uh, you know, they have brands, by example. So we see Coke advertising, you know, you can put your name, M&M, &M and so on. So there's a lot of uh, marketing initiatives and usually printers are part of the decision process and the, uh, and the marketing plan. So we're looking for partners who have relationship with, uh, with brands so that they are looking over the uh, traditional printing market. What is the, um, eventually it's gonna get to this, so let's just get it on the table. What yeah. is the pricing structure? Do they buy it up from you out front or 
is it like a leasing thing? How, do, how does it work? Uh, we, have, uh, we have two products. The first one is the on-premise solution. So they, it's a license fee. They install the solution in their, you know, in, in, uh, their system. So we integrate with any e-commerce platform. And we can provide also uh, an e-commerce platform, but it's historically immediately, but I didn't want the company to get too much deeper in the e-commerce. Uh, traditionally, we see a lot of e-commerce in the printing space where it's really, really production oriented. Uh, while we work hard on bringing all the new best practices of e-commerce. So that's why we launched a Magento plugin uh, recently. So anyone can just integrate uh, Magento with our cloud solution. This is a second product. The cloud solution is a cloud base, and it works with a really small setup fee, depending on uh, how deep and how many websites are on it. And in both uh, cases, we also have royalties. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate um, your support and your trust that um, I could be an ambassador for you, <laughs> for your company, and for Canada, and for America, and you know, bring everybody together. And um, where uh, is your booth, and how can people get in touch with you out there? Yeah, sure, I'll be there for, uh, for a few minutes if you want to talk to me, but our booth is just beside here, 4543. So if you would like to have a demo, we'd be very pleased to, uh, to sit with you and go uh, over our solution. And a media clip now comes to Print Chat every week. Andre comes to Print Chat with Media Clip. And um, what is your website? It's uh, mediaclip.ca. And you can go on our website. We have a lot of videos, blogs, white papers. A lot of, we have a YouTube channel as well. So we're pretty active on social media. So I suggest you follow us. Thank you so much for your time. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Bienvenue. Oh, sorry, yes. So I've got the last one. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Marie. Dan? Then him? No, then Sean, then John. That's, that's the order. <laughs> Solimar. Thank you. I, that's not going to happen. It would happen first. Dan Adler from Solimar. This is your third time? Third time in the Alliance? Three-peat? I think it's a three-peat. Thank you so much for your support and for your time and uh, spent uh, sharing your thought leadership with the community. It's very much appreciated. Salomar is also having a lunch here at, is it noon or 12.30? 12.30. 12 at 12.30. Um, in other words, free food, people going to the food court at 12.30. And a interesting conversation about how optimizing processes is actually good for uh, print customers at the, at the, um, you know, the end of it. So Dan, why don't you tell people who you are, what you do, and how Solimar is helping clients, your clients make money? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, including us and being a part of this super Can terrific. you guys hear him back there? No, you need to, right there. Perfect. I could already right. tell. So first of all, thank you for inviting us uh, to be a part of this super terrific thank organization you. and uh, presentation. And I can't forget to thank you for the wonderful coffee that oh, you have welcome. available here. Well, actually, you, you kind of bought it, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why I have an alliance, so they pay for things. That's right. But I spend your money wisely <laughs> on food and beverages. So I'm Dan Adler. I'm the Chief Relationship Officer at Solomar. Um, as CRO, I manage uh, the relationships with uh, people like um, Printerverse or with uh, our channel partners and other key uh, customers and contacts. And how is Solomar helping its customers make money? That seems to be a big question at the show. If they're going to invest money in you, it's not about ROI. They want to know how they're going to make money. So we have a very easy product for you to purchase here at the show and take home with you because it's not hardware, it's all software. 
So that's easier to put into your uh, briefcase. But uh, seriously, uh, we have workflow software. We have always been known uh, more in that pre-press area uh, so that people can make that whole workflow more efficient, being able to add value to documents and uh, be able to provide additional services to your customers and along with new opportunities. Like what? But what kind of, how do you add value and what kind of additional services? So for instance, we're able to take documents that maybe have already been um, prepared by your customer and then as a PDF file, for instance, we can take that document and add value into it. We can add color. We can help you transition easily into Inkjet. The, uh, and one of the things we're showing here uh, this year is augmented reality. That, uh, that AR is just a huge opportunity that everybody, if you're not familiar with it, you need to get educated in it because that's going to be the wave of the future. It actually brings the printed page to life. And are you providing the experience or the link? What it, how is Solomar involved in augmented reality? So we are working with a partner and in doing so, that partner actually has a platform where you can go on and create the actual augmented reality experience. They will help you in creating an app for your phone or tablet, if that's something that's required, or integration into your current uh, or your customer's apps so that you can easily be able to deliver this AR experience. And how does a printer make money from that? Well, the, the printer will normally be able to charge added services in order to bring that whole relationship together in the experience. So typically, uh, the printer is going to help in some ways almost as a design agency, but you don't have to be an agency to be able to do this. You would use our partner and uh, we can help along with that transition as well. Um, what, is, what is Solomar preparing for for the next five years? Where, 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 are you, where are you going to meet your customers in five years? So while we know that print is definitely not dead, we also do know that uh, digital communications in all kinds of forms are occurring. So we want to take advantage of that growth path and be able to not only support print, um, so it, with print, we're expanding our capabilities. Uh, we have been normally found in commercial shops, transaction, direct mail, that sort of thing. We're expanding into areas such as uh, labels and packaging because we see that as a right. real growth opportunity sure. along with all the other e-delivery uh, methods. Cool. Well, where is Solomar at the show, and how can people out there um, in live stream land get in touch with you, sign up for your newsletters, go to your demos, all that other, and, and really get exposure to all that great education that you do provide uh, people? Great. Um, so we are in booth 2458 here at the show. We have uh, a lot of our technical experts there so that you can uh, get familiar with our products. We um, have our website at solomarsystems.com. On the site, you'll be able to find an area where, which we call Solomar University Online. That uh, SUO has a library of videos for training, case studies, all kinds of things. So you just go online, you register it, and we make those things available to you so that you can uh, actually be a part of our educational process. And um, that's like part of the reason that these companies are in the Printiverse is because they provide education whether or not you end up using their products or not. They're all open to sharing knowledge. So thank you guys so much for that and for being part of the Printiverse once again. And you'll be back at 1230 for lunch and everybody should come and um, meet their whole team and learn more about really how Solomar is helping the print industry. Thank you so Excellent. much. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, you got little crappies. Thank you. Yeah. And next is Sean. Oh, sorry. We'll take a picture and then Sean from Motion oh. Cutter.
Thanks, Jack. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. Sean. Hello. Hello. You could, if you can just take this with you, Dan. Thank I you will. so much. Hello, Chuck. Hello, Deborah. Hello. Oh, sorry. That's slang for doll, right? Chuck? No? Uh, yeah, kind of. Oh. Yeah, kind of. Oh, depending it, on where you live, yeah. Oh, uh, that was from Birmingham, they told me. Okay. Bob's your uncle. And Fanny's your aunt. Those are my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. You know that one? Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt? It, it, it seems such a long time since we were alone together like it this. It was. It was such a long time. I've longed for, for, for to, look, to, to gaze into your baby <laughs> blue eyes again. Seriously, though, this is a smart guy. This is somebody who I've been, you know, we've been, let's say we've been sniffing around each other. Like, I've sniffed you for yes, a while, yes. We've, we've been sniffing yes. each other for a while. <laughs> And um, I'm sorry, Mom. That's my mother is not very happy that we're sniffing each other. But we, you know, I like that. You know, we were assessing situations. We were seeing where we were going. You know, we were looking, but finally at, uh, you know, again another HP uh, relationship uh, yep. through D Scoop. Yep. Uh, we merged in France, and at that point, it was obvious to me. Oh my God, Kevin Keen is sitting right there. Thank you. I've got this under control now. Thank you I, very much. I could much. just sing if you want. Um, so at that point when I saw your technology, mm. um, you had upgraded it a bit. Not yes. that there was a problem with it before, but now it's just super duper, cannot ignore it, got to have it. So why don't you tell everybody who you are, what you do, and why they should at least, if nothing else, look yep. at Motion Cutter. Okay, so my name is Sean Stanley. I'm the global sales manager and uh, one of the founders of Motion Cutter. Uh, the system itself was, was built by us because we had a need in our own print shop for doing uh, digital finishing. Um, we, we realized that the uh, uh, digital market was getting squeezed on price and we, we didn't want to get into price wars with other people. We wanted to uh, uh, make more money per sheet and the only way we could do that was in digital finishing itself. Uh, you're right, we, 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 we launched our first machine approximately uh, four, four and a half years ago um, and had a fantastic take up on that. Uh, we just released our Motion Cutter 2 version, um, which is... Uh, Spectacular. Yeah, uh, absolutely stunning. We, we're now... Uh, it stopped me in my tracks. I was like, what is that? We're now almost four times faster than we were with the first machine. Um, I think one of the important things that we've also done is... is We've made sure that as technology has, has advanced, that we're able to make sure that our original customers are able to upgrade with the technology. So we build our platforms so that any new technology we can build into uh, the, the, the old machinery. We don't want to leave anybody behind. We don't want anyone to think that they're going to make an investment in a new technology like laser cutting and not be able to uh, upgrade and keep up with things as they're going along. That's, that's always been very important to us because as a, as a printer, um, you do invest in a new technology. It's like, it's like buying a car and then a new model comes out a year later. Or, or uh, a phone, for that ab sake. Absolutely. Get a car. Absolutely. So um, that, that, that's key to us because um, it is an investment. And we don't want people to be put off by the fact that they, they, you know, they're going to be left behind or not be able to do something. So uh, our, our new system, you, you, you look at it, it's like fireworks going off in a box where this laser is just cutting through uh, paper. Uh, uh, it's actually moving and deflecting the laser at over 30 feet a second now, um, which, is, which is incredible. And it's, it, just to watch it, we have people with their mouths open just going, did oh, my go, God. Did you go see Jamie the printer? He did. He's freaking out. He's like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and Jamie, the printer's my, let's say, my BS meter. So he's like, no, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so now, now we've got uh, people using it in uh, such an array of different things. We designed it for paper. We designed it specifically for paper so that you could have two good sides. Um, traditionally, lasers have had one bad side, yeah. one good side. It was like burnt on the other side. Yeah. So one of our unique patents on our system is a steel mesh with... Uh, um, fans going underneath it. So we're sucking Wait, the smoke away. Wait, it doesn't go through the whole paper? Um, what doesn't go? The, the laser? laser? The laser cuts through the whole paper. Okay. Yeah, if you want so it to. But if you don't want it to and you want to kiss cut labels or whatever, we can control the depth to, to on a piece microns. Of, just on a piece of paper? Yeah, I mean, I can, I, if, you, if I had this piece of paper, I could put it under the laser and I could remove the ink back to the white paper again. 
But this is cardstock. It doesn't matter. I can control what? it. Yeah. You saw that? Okay, you just freaked me out, so just keep talking because I need a moment to absorb that. Yeah. I so, understand. So we have these fans underneath the conveyor, and uh, what that's doing is it's sucking the smoke away. So you're, you're, you're getting the smoke from underneath and from the top, and it's the smoke that's generally burning, not the laser itself. Ah. And so if we can get that smoke away, then we've got perfectly good paper. So that's, that's what we, we, we've got, and it's running through, and it's working perfectly. And, uh, you know, on, it depends on the speed, depends on the type of cuts that you've got. But, uh, you know, on, on simple die-cutting jobs, we can get up to 8,000 B2 sheets an hour. Now, what, what's B2 in U.S.? Uh, you're asking the wrong person. Okay. It's, all I know is it's big. You have B2 here as well. Okay. Okay, they would say it, but I, it's just, I would think it's a poster size, right? Like, is a print, is a stupid print? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a big, I so, just know when they say B2, they mean it's big. So we, we, we could, at full <laughs> speed, get up, uh, on a very simple cut, get up to 8,000 right. of those sheets through in an hour. So, but I want to stop you there, because um, I love digital technology. Mm -hmm. I do. And everyone always says, we can do one, we can do one, and great, you can do one. Yep. But how many do you actually have to do a month or a year in order for this machine to be worth it, let's say. Okay, well, I always say to people when they're looking at an ROI on the machine is, what are you doing now? So what's your workflow now? Because if we're able to die cut the pieces that you're spending money on dies for, then let's look at that as the first ROI. Don't look at new products. Don't look at anything different. Let's just look at what's currently happening. So when people look at their expenditure for their dies, work that out as the first ROI. And that, that may be five years, okay, just what they're doing now. Then we look at how we can improve their workflow. So let's look at that, how much time we're now saving you because you can, you can uh, you know, there's no setups for the dies, there's none of that. Then we also, we look at the ganging. How can we gang it? Because now you can do any shape. You don't need to set everything in line for a guillotine. So you're now saving on paper. So we will look at all of those first because this is what you've got now. Um, and then we'll look at showing you what you can do for one, because nobody offers one right. for um, individual labels, a sheet of labels. Nobody offers one. It's, no, no customer's going to buy one sheet. Right. But now you can, because you've got no outgoing cost to right. do it. So what are you going to make on one? How much will a customer pay for it? Your right. customer pay for it. Will they pay $20 for one sheet of paper? Right. Yes, they will. Um, so now you're making twenty twenty dollars for one you sheet of paper. You would for your for your Jamie. Besides being Jamie the printer, he's also Jamie Grilling Company, and he makes the best damn barbecue sauce. I have some in my house, which is the one I like. Kicked up, kicked up. What's it? Jamie Grilling Doc. Kicked up, but don't buy out the sauce because I like it. But <laughs> he is a. He needs. He has packaging. He has labels. He was talking yep. to the digital, you know, packaging people yesterday about that. So. To Jamie, a small quantity of labels would be something he would need from a printer. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we're seeing a, a, a rise in, in uh, sort of startup home businesses. And uh, Exactly. They, Those they, makers people. Yeah. And they, they, they can't afford to have a thousand to make it worthwhile um, to, to, to put their labels on their products, to do right. their farmer's markets, to do these things. Right. Um, so this is, the, you know, just the short runs for that is, 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 is easy. And, if you can allow them to come in somewhere in between a die cut and somewhere in between the price that it's costing you to, to, to process the sheet, um, there's a fantastic profit for it. I mean, we, have, we do like a fancy greeting card that goes through the laser. Um, it's costing about 70 cents um, in total with the paper, the print, and, every, and the cutting, and the handling. And they're selling online between $8 and $10. So right. We're, it's about making more money per sheet as well after you've worked out what you're doing now. And the unique p personalized products that you can make, every single one can be different. Um, it's, it's, so your return on investment is initially what you do now, how can we make it slightly faster, how can we uh, streamline your, your, your workflow process, and then look at all the unique products right. you can do afterwards. I mean, I always gravitate to printers who kind of saw that there was something that was missing and mm. then took a chance and developed a technology to fill that void because they understand yeah. what 
other printers are going through. So thank you so much no, for that. No, thank you. And uh, wh where can people see this freaking awesome machine? And somebody bring me back a sample of that ink coming off. And um, how can they find you online? And wh what are you guys doing next, next okay. shows? So uh, we're on booth 354, which is over on the, the back wall. Um, we're showing videos of the machine, and we've got samples there. We're with one of actually with our, one of our customers, uh, Arkansas Graphics, who uh, uh, are offering trade services to people that don't want to buy my machine straight away. Let's let try it out with them and go and speak to them and see what their experiences are with, with with our machinery. They were one of our early adopters in the U.S. and they've had the machine now for two years. Mention the printiverse. And we'll, uh, we'll work out a yeah, deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, our next thing is we've actually got a lot of uh, open houses that we're doing over in Europe, but we are now looking uh, to uh, set up shop, as it were. I'm looking at, at locations now in the U.S. <gasps> to uh, have, a, have a... You see Jamie, he perked up. He's like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. To have a permanent demo center here. And, uh, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna come and smash the U.S. now. Awesome. <laughs> Motioncutter.com or is it that .uk? That it's, thing? it's .com. Oh, awesome. Very yeah. smart. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank really you, Deborah. appreciate it. And I hope I'll, I'll, we'll see you on more panels. I think you'll see me I shortly. Think so. Thank, Thank you. you. Johnny Pig. Are we having a photo? You. Okay. You're next. A photo? No photo. And then. I want you to photo. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Oh, your did, we, did we photo? Picture. Oh, we. No, oh, no, no. We're good. We're good. We no, he's good. I want more. He, uh, Jack knows if we're not good. <laughs> Jack, Jack knows. Jack knows everything. You don't know Jack, but yeah. Jack knows everything. We're good? Fantastic. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the drying stylings of Johnny P. <laughs> good morning, Deborah. And the Adfosians. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. First of all, I'm going to ask you who you are and what you do and how Adfos is helping customers or partners uh, help customers make money. But first, what in God's name is Adfos? So um, that, that's a great question, and that's what happens when you have engineers that name companies. Um, Adfos actually stands for Advanced Photonics. Oh, and geez. <laughs> and photonics is basically light energy. Oh, that's actually cool. I like it. Yeah. Maybe we'll ask a print chat bonus if anyone knows what Adfos Oh, by the way, print chat, 3 o'clock Chicago time, 4 o'clock Eastern time today. Go ahead, Johnny P. So, uh, so what ADFOS does is we actually help um, our partners. So our partners might be companies like HP, might be companies like Kodak, might be companies like uh, Rico, like Screen, uh, many of the uh, inkjet press market bringers. We help them to enable faster print speeds. Um, obviously now people are wanting to do more and more with water-based inkjet. And what ADFO's drying technology enables them to do is to get greater throughput and speeds as well as better quality. Uh, matter of fact, a quick story, we had a, uh, there was a printer in, the, in Europe and this particular printer in Europe was competing for a job. They had a, uh, an inkjet printer and the, uh, they were competing against some laser work. And what ended up happening was the customer was rejecting. Oh, you don't mean like motion cutter laser, do you? No, no, no. Laser oh, toner, toner, okay, toner sorry. printing. I'm yeah, customer, no, oh, good. print customer. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, laser print work. And so they were competing with an inkjet press with uh, a laser press. And the, the inkjet press work was getting denied because they were having cockle and curl in the sheets because you're putting down massive amounts of water on paper, which then causes some cockle and curl. We implemented the ADFOS technology and they were able to get much, much flatter sheets, literally sheets that were as flat, even in some cases flatter than they were doing on the laser printers. So they were able to, to get the job and get the work and produce revenue. Are you picky about your partners? I, I liken ourselves to Switzerland. Um, you know, we are, you know, there are certainly some partners that, um, you know, maybe we're not crazy about as others, you know, but... No, but I mean, before you decide to put your technology into a press, are you 
I'm assuming that anyone that has your technology, you stand behind their equipment. Yes. That's what I meant. Okay, gotcha. So, um, so no, we, we are not that particular, but we want to make sure that, again, depending on the application, what they're wanting to do. So we'll sit down and, and personally meet with them because every printer, they may have a different you know criteria. One may want flatter sheets. Another one may want faster throughput. Another one may want, you know, so, so depending on what they're looking for, we'll sit down and we'll say, hey, sure, absolutely, we can help you. Or, you know, this isn't a fit because we got to have happy customers. And just general questions about inkjet drying, if you don't mind, because sure. I want to try to understand more why it's so important, because it is so important. Um, it seems that drying, ink cost, and substrates are three critical decision points, as well as what the press does, and I mean, after you, that. Sure. After they pick the one they want, it seems that the next step is comparing those three things. Can, when, if, if, does the drying ex affect the speed, I mean, uh, that the press goes, if you need it to, to dry more, uh, do, do some, does, do all printers need intense drying on inkjets? I mean, what, is it a high volume problem, a, a, a short run problem? Like, maybe just put some context around why the drying is so critical to these decisions. So as I kind of mentioned a little bit before, is is the drying, and, and you nailed it right on the head, Deborah, that it, it is, you know, it's, it's the interaction between ink, between substrate, and between drying. And that's one of the things that makes ADFOS very different, is we look at the entire process. So we work directly with paper houses, paper mills. We work directly with the ink manufacturers. We even go up the food chain and work directly with the people that supply the components to the ink manufacturers who make the ink, who then go through the inkjet head and then goes onto the paper. So we really look at the whole process. Um, Again, some of it is application driven. More and more people with water-based ink check technology, they're wanting to print on higher gloss substrates. They're wanting to print on lower cost substrates. Yes. So maybe, maybe uh, actually we have a customer again in, in Europe who was able to go from an inkjet treated, fairly expensive paper to a commodity grade coated sheet and use that on their press and, and cut their cost by almost a third just from that. So again, it is somewhat application driven. One of the, the things that makes ADFOS technology different is we're really doing like a flash drying process. So we put a lot of energy in a very small space to drive that water off the ADFOS technology but does not dry out the paper. You don't want that dry right, paper. Right, because it would crack, right? Because it'll crack, right. and, and, it, and it will cause, again, that some of right. that cockle and curl. Right. I actually learned about that at Drupa, um, that after they dry it, you put water back into it or something. There was the, the, the moisturizer guy from, yeah, I remember that. Right, right, right. We, but there, there was that other thing, and I was like, you just dried it. Now you're putting water on it. And like, they're, they're like, yeah, they have to kind of like, like a prune, get it back to life a little. And that is one of the differentiators with the ADFOS technologies. We're not taking that moisture out of the paper. We're taking the moisture out of the ink. So in many of those customers that have those moisturizers, they can turn them off, or they can sell them, or they can use them as a great boat anchor, whatever they want to do with it. <laughs> Jamie's from New Jersey, so we laughed at that. <laughs> Um, okay, where can people find you? How can they get in touch with you after? Are you providing any online education, videos, webinars, newsletters? Tell everybody everything, sure. John. One thing I did want to just real, real quick. We, um, we are also enabling printers to do more and more in the functional printing space. So we functional actually- Functional printing? Functional printing. So versus uh, this, which would maybe print to communicate. It's a communication tool, right? That's functional what it's for. Printing? What functional does that mean? printing. We're talking about printed electronics. We're talking oh, about. Oh, I like that. Um, we're talking about it. you know greeting cards that light up when you open them. Oh, okay. Functional. That's what functional, they call it. Functional. Oh, did well, you know that's that? printed electronics. Some okay, of the functional printing might be flooring or or decor things like that. So we're actually enabling what we'll call a, a, the the typical commercial printer to do more and get into new markets. 
with our technology. Thank you so much for your time, John. Really so appreciate 2348 it. 2348 over here. Um, also, adfos.com or at adfos for Twitter. And also, you can see our technology not only in our booth, but in the screen booth and DDS booth, uh, the Sarah Drop, the MGI booth, and the Konica Minolta space, as well as MCS. So we're awesome. all over the hall. And you've named a lot of our alliance partners, so that makes me happy. Absolutely. I love when our, my alliance partners are partners. Do you need a picture? One picture, and then we'll go Mark HP. Great. Johnny P. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take your thingy. Mark, bring up HP. I want to interview you after. It's okay. I got. Okay. Okay. Sandy, after Jamie, I want to interview you. Sorry. So you, you just learned about functional printing. I did. I never heard as that term As opposed to dysfunctional printing. I really, really like that term. It makes sense. Functional printing. Printing I'm, things that do something. Yes. I wish it just was, you know, stay, I kind of like printed electronics more, but I get it. It's like 3D printing. It doesn't really Flooring, need anything. Yeah, yeah, wallpaper. Yeah. Blinds. Function, uh, that's all functional printing? Okay. Let's actually, you, just so I'm clear, you're GSB, so you're all everything, right? I'm everything. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about everything because I rarely get a chance to do this with an HP person. Oh, dear. No, because you usually My get My heart is in high-volume <laughs> production printing. Okay, we're going to talk about but that my brain too, covers because all Because I really want to talk about the, corrugated, uh, the digital corrugated packaging. But first, why don't you just tell everyone who you are and what you do at HP, and then we will get into uh, the minutia, so to speak. Hi, I'm Mark. Anyway, Mark Johnson. I am the marketing manager for our high volume production mail, direct marketing, and publishing segments, which is just a fancy way of saying people who print a lot. So, is your business card about this big for uh, your yeah. title? Okay. Um, yesterday, I was talking about um, how HP kind of, you know, had this thing called Inkjet, and nobody was really talking about it. And then you were like, Deborah Corn, come help us talk about this. And then we were talking about it for about a while. And then I'm not saying we did it, but other people started talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. But prior to that, no one was really talking about it. Now HP is talking about digital corrugated packaging, and no one else is really talking about it yet um, as much. Why is that the vision? Let me, let me, let me take a step back. So okay. the, the foundational the technology is inkjet, right? And, and what HP has done is we, we really kind of invented thermal inkjet 40 years ago. And that was for home printers, little, little one-inch cartridge. It was cute. And then it expanded. It got beyond home printers. It got into label makers. It got into addressing systems. It printed postage stamps. And as we've gotten into the commercial print space after purchasing Indigo, we've taken that inkjet knowledge and applied it to high volume printing. And while we were at it, you know, we were looking at the, the transformation from mass static printed jobs to mass customized jobs, micro versions, individual one-to-one -one kind of stuff. We took that inkjet technology and brought it to commercial print, but why stop there? So you look at what HP then took with its inkjet vision, We've now gone down into office copiers. We're going after the A3 market in, in a very large volume space to actually replace what people think of as the copier. It's an inkjet machine now. We've got the inkjet presses that print books and statements and everything else. And we've got inkjet machines that print directly onto corrugated, so individual signs. We've got inkjet machines that print liners that go on long runs of, of packaging and corrugated boxes and folding cartons. We've even got inkjet technology, the same core technology that's part of our 3D printing division. So we're actually printing things with inkjet as well. So are these opportunities for big packagers? Do they already have to, like you have two versions, right? You have a liner yep. version and the side text so we, version, yeah, right? So yeah, we, we call it digital printing and then we call it pre-print. So okay, pre-print so, and post-print. So for me, I think it's easier to talk about the side text one because mm -hmm. Post-print. Yeah, post print. It is way more accessible to everyone than those big giant inkjet presses. But I still want to talk about those. But like, tell Jamie the printer right there. Did you did you meet Jamie Hi, the printer? Hi, Jamie. How you doing? That's Jamie uh, McLennan from a, a 
Allegro Princeton, and um, he's a print chatter, and we brought him here to um, listen to the panels and ask real printer questions, because he's a printer. How can Jamie the printer benefit from the side text, the, the post, post you said? Post print. Post print. So when you look at printing corrugated, um, it's just a thicker media than paper, right? This is actually lots of layers of paper, and it's a sign. It's a point of purchase sign. It's a sign like this. It's a sign that you put in a window. It's a billboard. It's lots of things that you can do with corrugated. It can also become a box. It can also become a box that things go into. And what you find with, with boxes, when you make corrugated boxes, you have to make them in the millions because there's a lot of prep work and it's a reviewer press and it's really complicated. What happens when you want to prototype something? So to do prototyping is, has always been a problem. It's been, been a pain in the butt to make all of these films and then laminate them onto something else and then manually construct this box. I just want to make 25 to show the board of directors or to show my, my first right. round of buyers. Or I to want pitch to do... the advertising exactly. agency, right. So that's where the inkjet device comes into play. Kind of like how, do you remember the old days of proofing? Remember how proofs used to be I done? I used to get match prints, yeah. Exactly. So think about match prints with layers and layers right. of color and all the manual. That's how you, you used to make prototypes of boxes. Right. Like a match print. What happened when digital proofing came out? No, we used to hire companies exactly. to make us prototypes and it would be a box. Yeah. And we didn't, I mean, so, someone was just cutting it out with an exacto so knife instead and of folding costing, it. In, yeah, exactly. Instead of costing a no, fortune. No, it cost a fortune. Exactly. So instead of costing a fortune, what if you could just put a piece of corrugated material on a flatbed and print right on it and be done? That's what So Cytex is does. the only advantage the volume otherwise en enabling people with the smaller volumes to go to a printer and have ex access to this? So with Cytex, you've got lots of different bands of, of volumes. What you can do with some of the more industrial size machines is do a little more than prototyping. You can actually do short runs with it. You can actually do production short runs with it. And then you've got slower machines that are good for prototyping. And then once you get into it where I need tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, that's where you go into the liner business, where you actually print the liners and corrugate it on a giant press. Okay, so HP's at a trade show. You're here at Print 17. What you got back there? What you, what's Nothing about what we just talked about. I know. So <laughs> because this show is not about packaging. Right. No, so that's what I mean. Like, what, Let's now get to why you're here. I just appreciate uh, being able to have access to thought leaders and uh, sharing information with um, you know regular printers who need help. Uh, well, it, it, it's a good thing for printers to be looking at adjacent markets to get into, I think right? so. I mean, this... On the Cytex, I get it. The big, I'm sorry, the big web press, that's a, you, you, you better have other work. There's a universe of 20 for that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying before you, you, you buy that, you better have other work to go on it first and then, you no, know. But, you but know, right. the universe for that press, there's 20 packages right, yeah. in North Though, America. They're big, but they're, they're big. amazing. Yes. Please. When you look at what we're doing at this show, we've got Indigo presses, we've got Design Jets, we've got Inkjet output, not necessarily the actual press at the show, it's just it's too big and it's too industrial to bring here. What we've got here are stories. What we've got here are actual live jobs that customers have done, and we're showing not just what, how good they look and what they can look like, but what they do, what they perform. So when you look at a retail, when I talk about microversioning, what the heck does that mean? We can actually show you a catalog that's different for Jane and Alice and Sally, and it's based on their age bands or the geography, showing what this, this customized micro mass customization looks like. So we've got real live applications and the results from those applications. So yeah, we can show you the pretty print, love to show pretty print all day, but I think it's probably more compelling for printers to learn how to tell that story of how pretty print makes their customers more money. Right, and um, I mean, it goes without saying that HP is always a source of print inspiration, uh, as we like to say love in the Printiverse. Phrase. And, um, I mean, just go to the booth. Their applications, I mean, uh, the thing I like HP is that they literally let their print sell itself because um, what you see is that um, people are able to get very creative with it and um, because it's flexible, um, it's almost color is always pretty right. much spectacular. And if you don't like when the everything color, comes together with the right paper and the right knowledge and the right press person, you know, it all comes together. Um, HP technology produces spectacular results that are seen all over the world. I mean, everybody knows the stories, um, but I have, uh, yeah. So um, as for your support of the Printiverse, we're at six years. Um, 
couldn't do it without you. I give you guys full credit for plucking me out of obscurity and starting to take me around to shows. Uh, so thank you so much for your support. How can, where are you at the show? How can people get in touch after? You can find us here at 613 if you're at McCormick Place, and if you want to come look at us online. Let me give you a new website to look at. Um, you can look at hp.com, of course, and if you want to learn more about Inkjet, in particular with HP, Trends in Print. It's actually inkjet.trendsinprint.com. What's that? Yeah, it's a little microsite we, we oh, got to talk about little, Inkjet stories. A little something, something. A little yeah, something extra on the really. side. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Jack, do you want a picture? And then I'm going to bring up Jamie the printer to have an interview. And then Sandy Jamie Hubbard. Jamie to be on the spotlight now. I want to paint these guys blue. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Take your sign. You don't have a sign, Jamie the printer. You don't have a sign. I don't. You are your own sign. Oh, sweet. Have a seat. You can use this mic. Like that. On one of the TPA yeah. papers. That's to the papers that. That is cool. Yeah, the paper silver. In the back you printed that. You printed yeah. that. That's That's what I know. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the whole show I've been talking about Jamie the printer. That's Jamie the printer. Hello. <laughs> Yay. So Jamie the printer is from Allegra Princeton. And you and your company generously donated yourself yes. to come here for four days and sit here and listen to panels and walk around the show and gather information about what's going on out there. So that's, first let's, let's talk a little bit about you and what you do and what Allegra does and then we'll get into what you've seen at the show and what you've learned from the panelists here. Okay, uh, I am Jamie McLennan with Princeton. Allegra Princeton, uh, we are in Cranberry, New Jersey. We like to think of ourselves as a one-stop print shop where we can do large format, rigid roll, we do offset printing, Eidelberg five color, we do indigo, we have Canon digital presses, uh, we have pretty much everything we can do in-house bindery-wise. Uh, you come to us, we can manufacture a few pieces digitally up to 100,000 pieces offset printed. So we have a pretty big market where we're at from universities, hospitals, uh, insurance companies, um, and you know, we also work with a small company, small landscaping companies around the corner, and help them with their direct mail projects. So, and you call yourself a creative print strategist. Why is that different than a salesperson? Uh, I like to think of myself as more than just sales. I like to sit down with customers early, find out what they want to do, show them different ways to make it happen. Um, it's not always, you know, a lot of times they come with us, they already know what they want. We need 10,000 copies on plain white paper. That's it. Uh, the best part is helping the customers that come to you and say, this is the thing we want to do. It's, you know, something a little different. What do you have ideas? Can you let us know what you've done? Show us a couple different ideas to do that. That's the, that's the more fun part about it. Okay, so you've been sitting in printer's row and front row seat yes. for four days now. What is your overall feeling of the panels and the panelists um, so far, and I'm not looking for a compliment. Like, oh, you know, we're having, you know, me. Yeah. I, I can take it. So I want to know. The I truth. have been very impressed. Uh, my first time here, first time at in Chicago at the show. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, totally. I've, I mean, I watched some of the videos from the previous years and knew a little bit. But yeah, totally. The uh, the companies that you have here, I've learned so much. I have a notebook full of uh, answers, uh, different questions that I've asked. Uh, I've gone to, gone to see at least, most everybody here I've gone to see their booth, at least walked by and checked it out. Very impressive. The answers I've gotten have been gone a long way. Uh, I hope everybody watches the videos later. Uh, definitely learned a lot. What um, have you, not just from here, but from walking around too, did you have your mind set on any one direction maybe of equipment or something you were looking at, that, but you came here and you discovered something that maybe made you think of it differently? Uh, I had a list of companies to come look at, companies that we work with, see what we can do, that anything new that they are offering. Uh, the one thing that has truly blown me away here has been Sean at Motion Cutter. Uh, that really awesome piece of equipment. Um, we have something similar to that. His is uh, a couple steps above. It's just, it's really cool. and just was uh, impressed with what they do. Awesome. Um, so 
Uh, print chat. You come to print, print chat. chat every week, um, and uh, that's sort of how you got here. But um, you are a printer, and uh, you have needs besides sitting here at the um, at the uh, watching panels. So, with that saying, tell me about the show. Uh, what's going on back there? Because I haven't walked around yet. Yeah, it's funny because I've been in the booth most of the time too. So I've gotten here early to walk around and bother people before they were setting up. I don't think everybody was happy with that, but <laughs> I'm like, I only have till 10. I need to see you now. So I've had some great uh, experience with one of the companies that make our offline uh, UV coating. Uh, they offer a new soft touch. They offer new patterns. You can mention them. Even I can't remember their name okay, right sorry. now, but sorry. I'm just saying if they're not in alliance, like I want people to have information. And another company they were looking for, they are powered by Memjet, which I did not know that, and was really cool to see that. So, awesome. And they do box printing, So, and it's an inkjet system, so something that we were looking at as well. So um, that was kind of cool, and that was something new to learn that. I knew the company's name, but when I saw that, that's now all I can remember is that they right. were powered by Memjet. So I just want to say on a personal note, it was your 25th anniversary yesterday? 25th anniversary yesterday. And, uh, Jamie, Hi, Joanne. <laughs> hey, Joanne. Thanks for lending us your husband. However, their plan was to go to Florida last week. So he actually dodged a hurricane yes, bullet. Yes, we did. So we were speak, going to go to Florida on Friday. That was by uh, coming here instead <laughs> and um, watching our panel. So thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. It's been a great time. I did want to talk to Sandy Hubbard for five minutes before our next panel. So still going to do that, but Sandy needs to move fast. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh yeah, picture. picture. I don't think we have enough. Let's stand up. <laughs> it's on camera. What you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sandy Hubbard. Wow. Print Chat moderator. Help print thrive. Tell people how you're helping printers help print thriving, thriving printing. Well, and who I, you are and what you do. Okay. Um, I'm Sandy Hubbard. I do help print thrive. I've been in the printing industry for decades. And when I met Deborah, it gave me the opportunity to really start reaching masses of people um, and tell the story about the role of print, um, that it is thriving, that it has technology that reaches into all aspects of our culture, and um, really to open people's eyes about the importance of print and the economic impact of this gigantic industry around the world. So people forget that the United States is only one part of the global printing um, economic impact. And print in a lot of countries is on the rise. Um, maybe it's 10 or 15 years behind where we are now. They're going through a lot of the um, technology impacts that we've gone through. And so from the position where Deborah is, it's allowed me to talk to people all over the world and help them uh, make their businesses more effective to integrate digital options, especially for countries that need more affordable options to promote print and to incorporate print. So um, I'm just thrilled to be part of Deborah's team because it really allows me to help more people. Um, Deborah reaches out to a lot of um, students and bringing people up in that way, which is so exciting to me because that's part of my passion as well. So again, this collaboration's been amazing for my goals. Thank you, Sandy Hubbard. Um, you are one of those people who dares to say, I help printers do e-newsletters, <laughs> you know? And um, I want you to talk about that and the importance of that and also how they can tie it to print and how they can show their customers that it can be done the same way. Okay. So I do, I, um, I go into print shops, I look at their marketing assets, all the different places that they're talking to their customers. One of the strongest places that printers can interact with their customers is through email. Um, especially if they're in a business to business application, um, their customers are usually on their phone or at their desk. Um, if you have a good relationship with your customers, they're going to open your email as long as you keep providing useful, relevant, topical information. And so that's, a, that's imperative with email communications. And really, email 
in any manner. Um, we can talk to people through lots of different ways, and so if you're going to impose on somebody through email, it better be good. And the other thing is, if you're not tying it to print, shame on you. I mean, I hate to say that, but really, you're a printer. Um, not only that you are creating beautiful print that will dazzle your customers and their customers, but it's you've got the technology, you have the data, um, you can make multiple touches in a much easier way than anybody else out there. You can customize it on the fly. Um, if you're not taking your channels and tying your messaging together and moving people, I mean, really, it's all about sales, right? If you're not moving people through that sales process using your assets, um, you're not taking advantage of the strongest things that you have in your marketing array. I strongly encourage everyone to connect with Sandy on LinkedIn and follow you on Twitter at Sandy Hubbard. And of course, every week at Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, today, 3 p.m. Central Time. Sandy is the Print Chat moderator. She is my partner in Print Chat and um, holds down the fort when I am out there being the intergalactic ambassador. Because when Sandy and I say Print Chat is every Wednesday, we mean every Wednesday, except there's been a few occasions where literally Christmas was right, on a Wednesday right, or right. New Year's Day we're, was on. We're not on a, the Grinch, but hey, right. if you want to chat, we're there. Right, but we have we always chat the Wednesday before yeah, Thanksgiving. Even if right. there's only three people there, we are there. So, yeah. Sandy, I mean, you've brought people into the community, um, very intelligent people because of the um, work that you do, there has to be a certain level of already next thinking, and those are the people that you're attracting to the Printiverse, and I couldn't really do it without you, so thank you so much for that, and now get back to your desk. <laughs> Sandy's manning my Twitter account. She's not allowed to talk to anybody. We'll take a picture, Jack, and um, we'll be back in a moment with integration, I think a, a panel about software. Software panel, uh, laying the foundation for something.